Ukrainian troops must be withdrawn from the entire territory of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, Zaporozhye and Kherson regions, then Russia will be ready for negotiations. This was stated by Russian President Vladimir Putin at a meeting with the leadership of the Russian Foreign Ministry. Ukrainian troops must be completely withdrawn from the Donetsk, Lugansk People's Republics, Kherson and Zaporozhye regions, and I draw attention to this, from the entire territory of these regions within their administrative borders that existed at the time of their entry into Ukraine. As soon as Kiev declares that he is ready for such a decision and will begin a real withdrawal of troops from these regions, and will also officially notify of the abandonment of plans to join NATO, on our part, immediately, at the same minute, an order will follow to cease fire and begin negotiations, the head of state indicated. I repeat, we will do this immediately, Putin emphasized. The president noted that the Russian side's conditions for starting negotiations are simple and explained that Moscow has always strived for peace. Russia also guarantees the unhindered and safe withdrawal of Ukrainian units from Donbass and Novorossiya if such a decision is made in Kiev, the president said. Naturally, at the same time we guarantee the unhindered and safe withdrawal of Ukrainian units and formations. We, of course, would like to count on such a decision, both on the withdrawal of troops, and on non-aligned status, and on the beginning of a dialogue with Russia, in Kiev they will accept it independently, the president emphasized. Russia sends African students to fight in Ukraine. They are being used as cannon fodder. As Russia's manpower shortages are exacerbated by losses during its current offensive in the Kharkiv region, Russian officials are forcing thousands of migrants and foreign students to fight in its so-called special military operation in Ukraine, Bloomberg reported, citing unnamed European officials. The Kyiv Post says that Moscow authorities are employing tactics akin to those used by Yevgeny Prigozhin's Wagner mercenary group to recruit convicts, combining promises of good pay with threats to cancel the visas of African students and young workers unless they agree to enlist in the military. There are numerous reports of Africans in Russia on work visas being detained and threatened with immediate deportation unless they agree to fight. Some of those targeted have reportedly been able to avoid being mobilized and to remain in the country by paying bribes to the recruiters. The Russian practice of forcing migrants and students to join its war has been going on since the earliest days of the full-scale invasion. A European official said, these foreign troops are thrown into battle after receiving the bare minimum of training and suffer extremely high casualty rates. Bloomberg said that the Russian Foreign Ministry didn't respond to a request for comment. Ukrainian intelligence agencies say that Russia is engaged in a global recruitment drive seeking foreign mercenaries in at least 21 countries, many in Africa. They offer lucrative signing bonuses and salaries for individuals who will join up as contract soldiers, often using employment agencies in those countries to identify those who have looked for employment in Russia. In January, it was reported that mercenaries from Somalia, Syria, India, Cuba, China and Serbia were fighting for Russia in Ukraine. A Serbian recruiter, Dejan Beric, said that Moscow's commanders treated Serb volunteers like cattle, calling them gypsies. Some Serbs who refused to be sent into a meat assault with virtually no weapons were branded as deserters and war criminals. In February, CNN reported that as many as 15,000 Nepalese had been recruited, many fooled into thinking they would be working in service industries, according to Nepal's former foreign minister Bimala Rai Podyal. An unidentified senior Ukrainian military official told Bloomberg that there has been a major increase in the number of foreign fighters captured by Ukraine on the battlefield, with those from Africa becoming increasingly common. Yevgeny Primakov, the head of Russo True Nishestvo, an organization whose mission is to strengthen Russia's humanitarian influence in the world, said at the St. Petersburg International Economic on Thursday, June the 6th, every year we sign up about 6,000. 500 students from Africa to study in Russia for free. 
Various estimates put the number of African students currently in Russia at between 35,000 and 37,000, with similar numbers employed on work visas.